Content warning. Flashing lights and images. Screen blur. Death. Depression. Body dysphoria. War. This video contains spoilers on the game Golden Rays of Sunshine. Golden Rays of Sunshine is a game immersed in the past. This is most clearly seen in the fact the game is made in GB Studio, a tool to make actual Game Boy games that are also able to be played on PC. I even played the game once in a Game Boy emulator, using shaders that try to emulate the original Game Boy's green color palette, or if it was played on a CRT. While these shaders are meant to be attempts at recreating the original look of Game Boy games, here it could feel a little like a novelty, an adherence to certain visual styles the game on PC doesn't have, though the game itself is having similar conversations with various pasts. Created by Saori Mitsueda for the 2020 Vextro Game Jam and Showcase, Golden Rays of Sunshine is not just a Game Boy game, but also uses assets from other Game Boy games. Specifically, they are Saga 1 through 3 and Zelda Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Using assets from older RPGs is a common thing in RPG Maker games, but their use for the platform they were originally meant for lends another layer of the past to the game. Old sprites and tile sets put together to create a city in the post apocalypse of a war, and a zombie recalling her relationship with the robot. You play as the zombie beginning in her home thinking back on these moments in reverse order, with the exception of the final one. This entire experience is in silence, no music or sound effects, and while in a secret dev room it is revealed to be due to the developer having a lack of knowledge on GB Studio's music tools, it ends up fitting the contemplative nature of the game. Things are put on hold, the zombie the only one who moves through the city, each area triggering another memory. Going through events chronologically, the zombie meets the robot for the first time in her original frame, a military robot immobilized by a tree growing in her. The war is over, whatever that war was, and thus there is no reason for hostility. She appreciates the company and asks the zombie to name her, never having a name before. In the next memory, we see the robot with a different sprite, a new frame the zombie had gotten her. There were other frames she got but none fit quite like this one. The robot had dysphoria about her old frame, now finding a form that's hers. The later memories engage with how it changes her view of the world, her relationships, and herself for the better. Having stepped out of the building she was trapped in for who knows how long, and seeing the city again, she is surprised to discover how beautiful it has become, despite nothing really having changed. She's able to engage in physical intimacy with her new frame through a hug with the zombie. She also starts to be able to look back on the tree that constricted her old frame and reconcile with it. She sees it as just a regular tree now and moves on. These are things she wouldn't have been able to see without alleviating that dysphoria. The robot is learning so much about herself, never having an opportunity to have an identity as a military robot, so she wants to learn more which leads to her decision to leave the zombie and travel the world. She wants to live for the first time. She leaves the zombie a seed from the tree to plant in her garden, so a part of her is always there, and then leaves. After this final memory, we finally read the zombie's thoughts. We learn that the zombie had trouble communicating with Beepy, which is the name she gave the robot. She too is struggling with her identity, though not in the same way as Beepy. At the zombie's home, we see she has a garden of flowers she takes care of, but now we learn why. The flowers that she grows were less out of genuine interest and more out of obligation to her life before undeath. She can't understand why she used to care about the flowers. The her that started doing it feels like a completely different person. She begins to hate herself for not being able to change, but her memory of Beepy telling her that her home was very her changed her view even if only a bit. She decides she wants to take care of the tree, and maybe one day understand what BB saw in her and those flowers. Golden Rays' Sunshine explores identity through both the zombie and BB, and while the specifics of their issues were different, meaning they could never quite communicate with each other completely, the game doesn't see that as flawed. 
They both help each other in their own way, but it's not always on purpose. In their time together, the relationship is defined not just by acts that were intentional, but the one-off remarks, the small gestures, the things that weren't meant to stick but run through the other person's head over and over. Casual scenes which give the player glimpses that on their own would mean little, but by the end create the impression of an awkward but caring relationship. There's reciprocity in how the game frames the relationship between the zombie and BP. Distance here takes on something generative. The zombie and BP have parted ways for now, but their effect on each other is still there, in flesh, in memory banks, and in roots in the ground. It's what allows their personal growth to happen. Golden Rays of Sunshine has a softness in its handling of the story, though it's slightly complicated in its ending. The war may not be over outside the city. In spaces outside the immediate purview of the world's hegemonic forces, the zombie and BP were able to create space for each other and come to better understandings of themselves. Despite this, BP does leave, but it's not in resignation and rather in hope. She's willing to face what might be out there and still keep learning about who she is. Through this ending, we are left not with a conclusion, but two people within an ongoing process. This is where the various ways the game incorporates the past become clear. It's not an adherence to the past, a mere regurgitation into the present. It's a recognition of who we were, who we are, and what we do to be who we want to be. Retro aesthetics and old assets used for a story that couldn't exist on the platform in its heyday. A city mired in the past, but the possibility for seeds to still grow. A lull in a romance story. And thus an ending with an excitement for the people they'll be when they meet again. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon or Coffee. Patreon is if you want to support me monthly, and Coffee is for one time support. These videos wouldn't be possible without the generous support of my patrons and coffees. Any amount helps this channel keep going. Anyways, here's my Twitter, my Instagram, my channel link if you want to subscribe, and some other videos I've made. Well, that's all I had to say. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around.